do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends in this video we will study about the flow rate measuring device known as rotor meters rotor meters are also known as the variable area meters so in this video we will study about its principle of working its construction its applications together with its advantages and disadvantages so let us start with our topic rotometers they are the devices which are used for the measurement of flow rate so they are used as the flow meters means for the measurement of the flow of either liquids or gases in a closed tube so if a liquid is flowing in a pipe then the rotor meters they are used for the measurement of the flow rate of the liquids and if the gases are flowing in the pipe then it is used for the measurement of flow rate of gases also so for both liquids and gases flow rate measurement the rotor meters are used So rotor meters they are invented by the scientist Carl Kuipers and since then they are being widely used for the measurement of flow rate Now the rotor meters they come under the category or under the class of devices which are known as the variable area meters. So rotor meter is also known as a type of variable area meter where the flow rate is measured by measuring the change in the cross sectional area of a tube. So because flow rate is measured indirectly means by measuring the very uh, the, the change in the cross section so they are known as the variable area meter So rotor meters they measure the flow rate by measuring the change in the cross sectional area. In rotor meters there is a tapered tube. Tapered tube means a tube which is having a wider opening and a narrow closing. Okay? So at the top of the tube it is widened and at the bottom the tube is having a very narrow opening so the shape of the tube is tapered so a tapered tube is used and in that tapered tube as the fluid starts flowing the cross sectional area of the tube also gradually increases okay so the change in the cross sectional area of the tube is used to measure the flow rate of the fluid flowing in the pipe okay so that is the basic principle on which the rotor meters work
as i have said that in rotameters the flow rate is measured by measuring the change in the cross sectional area and the change in cross sectional area is occurring because the fluid is flowing in the pipe okay now what this fluid is causing and uh, what is the cause of the change in the cross sectional area the flow rate inside the rotameters it is measured using a float so in rotameters we are having a tapered tube and in that tube we are having a float so as the fluid starts flowing the float also rises up in the tube okay as the float rises up so this float is not going to, uh, this float is lifted up because based on the buoyancy and velocity of the fluid which is opposing the gravity and gravity is pulling the float down so fluid uh, due to the flow of the fluid the float starts rising up and due to the rising up of the float the change in the cross sectional area is occurring so the rate of flow is proportional to the change in the cross sectional area so in this way in rotameters due to the movement of the float or due to the rising up or falling of the float the change in the cross sectional area is occurring and that change in cross sectional area is proportional to the flow rate of the fluid now the float is rising up in the tube so on this float two forces are acting one is the gravity that is acting in the downward direction and pulling the uh, pulling the float in the downward direction but the fluid flow is trying to raise up the float so two forces are acting one in the upward direction and one in the downward direction so at the position where both these forces are equal the float is going to come in a steady state so because the gravity is acting on the flow so sometimes these rota meters they are also known as the gravity flow meters and why they are known as the gravity flow meters because the gravity is acting as the opposition force trying to pull the float in the downward direction so they are known as gravity flow meters because they are based on the fact that gravity is opposing the rising up of the float uh, and the upward force acting that is the fluid flow it is trying to raise the float so there is an opposition between these two forces opposition between the downward force of gravity and the upward force of the flowing fluid okay now the position where these two forces upward force and the downward force they are equal at that position the float is going to come at the rest position or steady state and that position can be measured with the help of a calibrated scale so when the flow of the fluid is constant means when both the forces are equal then the float stays in one position and that position can be related to the volumetric flow rate and that position is indicated on a graduated scale so here one thing we have to keep in mind that uh, to keep the full force of gravity active on this float or working on the float the dynamic balancing should be there and for the dynamic balancing the tube okay 
so there must be a vertical measuring tube which should be in a tapered position so that there is a change in the uh, cross sectional area tapered is used because if a straight tube will be used like this and if float is present here so when fluid is flowing here it is going to lift the float upwards and there will be no change in the cross sectional area okay the cross sectional area that is this area will remains the same when the float is rising up or falling down but if the tube is tapered and float is suppose present here and fluid flow is trying to raise up so when this fluid is raising the float a change in the cross sectional area is occurring here the area is different here the area is different so that is why in the rotameters a tapered tube is used okay but this tube should be kept in the vertical position so that the gravity can act on it okay and a dynamic balancing will be there between the upward force and the downward force so this was the principle of working of the rotameters that how they measures the flow rate by measuring the change in the cross sectional area now here as the uh, flow rate is not measured directly it is measured indirectly by measuring the change in cross sectional area so rotameter we can say that it is an indirect method of flow rate measurement where the scale is not giving us the direct readings of flow rate but it is giving an indication of the change in the cross sectional area okay so level is uh, the flow is not indicated by the scale but a different quantity is indicated so it is an indirect method of flow rate measurement now let's see the construction of rotameters so we have seen here that the rotameter it consists of two main parts one is the tapered tube which is made up of glass and a float which is generally spherical in shape and it can be made up of stainless steel metals or ceramics okay the shape is generally spherical so that when the fluid is rising up it can easily raise the float now we have studied the material of which the float is made up of we have studied its shape that it is spherical in shape now this float it should be made up of material uh, which uh, or this float it should be denser than the substance it is resting in okay so suppose that we are having the water as the fluid we want to measure the flow rate of the water flowing in a pipe and the float it should be denser than the water so that it does not sinks in water but it floats on the surface it does not floats on the surface of water but it floats somewhere between the surface and the bottom of the container okay so float is just not on the top of the surface of the liquid but is it is somewhere between the surface of the fluid and the bottom of the container so it should be 
made up of a material which is which is denser than the uh, fluid which is whose flow rate we want to measure okay now let's see the diagram for the rotameters So this is the diagram for the rotameters. You can see it consists of a tapered glass tube and in this glass tube we are having the float. Okay. Now this float, uh, on this float when the fluid starts flowing, okay, it is somewhat like in this bent shape from downwards so from here the fluid starts flowing in it so when the fluid flows there is an upward force acting on this float due to which the float rises up in this tube okay now on this float the gravity is also acting and this gravity will try to pull the float downwards now this float will come at an equilibrium position when the gravity and the flow both the upward and the downward forces acting on this float they are equal so it will come to the rest position or the equilibrium position where the two forces are equal and we can read its position on a graduated scale so when the float is downwards means when the fluid is not flowing the float will be at the bottom of the tube okay so at that uh, pos uh, at that position we can measure its uh, position with the help of the scale now as the fluid starts flowing the float also rises up so there will be a different position so that position can also be measured with the help of the scale so area is also changing because at the bottom the area is narrow but when in the middle the area will be more so there will be a change in the cross sectional area so that cross sectional area the change in cross sectional area will be proportional to the rate at which the fluid is flowing okay so in this way it is going to measure the flow rate so that was the construction So as the liquid or the gas it passes through the tube the flow of the liquid or gas causes the float to rise. So we can measure a precise value of the flow rate by measuring the position where the float is resting. Okay. So that was all about the construction and the working of the rotameters. Now let's 
derive the equation through which we can measure the flow rate and through which we can get that the change in cross sectional area is proportional to the flow rate okay So as in the rotameters a tapered tube is used so we have seen the shape of the tapered tube that in that tube the cross sectional area or its diameter is increasing gradually. So due to the increase in the diameter of the tube the area around the float the annular area around the float is also increasing and this tapered tube it is going to follow the volumetric flow rate equation. And that equation is Q equals to K A under root of G H where Q is the flow rate, the volumetric flow rate, K is a constant, A is the annular area between the float and the wall of the tube. G is the force of gravity. And H is the pressure head. So from this equation you can see that K is a constant, acceleration due to gravity is also a constant and in the uh, rotameters there is no change in pressure, okay. So pressure head is constant also. So this flow rate, volumetric flow rate, it is directly proportional to the annular area. So we can say that as the area is changing, the volumetric flow rate is also changing or if flow rate is changing, the area is also changing. So by measuring the uh, change in the cross-sectional area, we can measure the flow rate of the fluids. So this was the equation on which, on the basis of which the rotameters work and uh, they measure the flow rate. Now comes the advantages of the rotameters. So some of the advantages of the rotameters is that they are very easy to construct. They are made from inexpensive materials. They do not require any external force except the substance which is used to measure the flow rate. And also they are used in a wide variety of systems due to their portability and small design. Also, The rotameters can be installed in areas with no power because as I have said that they do not require any external force. So the power which is required for their um, operation that is provided by the fluid only. Okay. So the fluid whose flow rate we want to measure that substance is providing the internal power for its operation.
Also, the rotameters they can be installed with the standard pipe fitting, so no modifications are required. And if the rotameter is properly maintained, then such type of rotameter is going to provide the operator a very high repeatability. Also, the range of flow rate measurement is also very high. So a wide rangeability is provided. Also, the rotameter scale is linear. So no non-linearity problem is also there. The flow rate is, uh, is linearly varying with the change in the area. So its a scale is a linear scale. Also, pressure loss. due to rotameters is minimum. So these are some of the advantages of the variable area meters or the rotameters. Next come its disadvantages. As in rotameters, the gravity is playing a very important role because gravity is pulling the uh, float downwards and fluid flow is uh, causing it to move, move in the upward direction. So the rotameters, they must be install, uh, installed vertically with the fluid flowing up through it okay so when the fluid is flowing in the upward direction gravity is pulling the float in the downward direction so rotameter should be kept in the vertical position with the fluid entering in it from the downward direction from the bottom and so that the float can be raised up with the fluid flowing okay Also, it is difficult for rotameters to adapt for the machine readings, although in some of these cases, the magnetic type of floats can be used. So the graduated scale which is used for the measurement of the flow rate or for studying the position of the float, that graduated scale is valid only for the specific fluid and conditions where it was calibrated. So this uh, scale has to be calibrated again and again for the specific setup or for the specific fluid and the conditions. So for every time we are using a different fluid, every time we have to change the setup of the graduated scale we have to calibrate it again okay so again and again <coughs> so again and again calibration has to be done for this graduated scale so that is a disadvantage Now rotameters because uh, the tube it is made up of the transparent material glass material so that the operator can see the movement of the float. So this transparent material the fluid which is uh, whose flow rate we want to measure so we have to check the chemical compatibility of that 
fluid with the transparent material so that no damage can occur okay so for every fluid before uh, the doing any type of measurement so before doing any measurement we have to check the compatibility of that fluid chemical compatibility with the transparent material or the material of which the rotameter tube is made of so these are the disadvantages of the rotameters now comes its applications So rotameters are used to measure the flow rate in systems where the liquid or a gas is flowing through a pipe or a tube. In water plants, in wastewater plants, it can be used to measure the flow rate. Okay. Portable rotameters can also be constructed for which are used to measure the flow rate of the large bodies of liquids or gases like uh, liquids in liquids we have the river the oceans and in gases we have the atmosphere so for the large amount of liquids and gases the portable rotameters can be used. So when we are measuring with the help of the portable rotameters in these large bodies of liquids or gases, so simply these portable rotameters, they are dumped into the substance, they are placed into that uh, substance and the measurement can be done with that, okay. So these are the applications we have seen that rotameters they are used for the flow rate measurement of liquids as well as gases. In liquids we have water, oils in the pipelines, the wastewater industries, okay, chemical industries where there we can use them for the liquid flow rate measurement and gases flow rate measurement it can also be used. So in this video we studied about the flow rate measuring device rotameter which is also known as the variable area meter because it measures the flow rate by measuring the change in the cross sectional area around the float. Here we studied its construction, its principle of working, its advantages, disadvantages and its applications. So I hope that this topic is now clear to you. Thank you.